What's up, everybody? It is uh, your neighborhood poet, Brandon Leak here. Um, and for all those who are tuning in for the first time, either listening or watching, who have no idea who I am, hi, my name is Brandon Leak. I am a native of Stockton, California. I am a spoken word artist, writer, and performer. I am a believer in Jesus as well as um, a father of two beautiful children, a husband to an awesome wife. And uh, I am now doing what everybody else in the industry is doing. And I'm now the host of a wonderful podcast um, entitled Vulnerability. And so this is episode one of said podcast. So thank you and welcome. I hope that you'll find some value added from you know these brief moments, you know, like 10 to 15 minutes worth of time and some of the topics that I'll be bringing here as well as that you all will be able to bring and some conversations I'll have with some other people at later times. Um, so this, this podcast is called Vulnerability because I want to take the time to express some of the growth and some of the growing points that I have as a man and that I've been working through in my 31 years of life and hopefully have it be a resource for some other people to be able to learn from. And also, I'm really just a big verbal processor. So being able to share some of these instances helps me better comprehend what I'm already going through. So it's slightly selfish in nature, too. So but that's OK. Um, what I'd like to talk about today is the difficult task of being both physically, emotionally, and spiritually present within a particular moment and how difficult that is for me personally and I'm sure for a lot of you all. Um, if, if you're like me, you are likely a futurist. And what that means, I can, I can pull up the definition of it for you. Give me one second. The technical, the technical definition for a uh, futurist is uh, a person who studies the future and makes predictions about it based on current trends or events, or somebody who is constantly perceiving the future as opposed to being physically present within the now. And Here's what I know about most people who are like me, whether they be artists, athletes, they rarely are present in what's going on now, especially in their victories and successes, because they're constantly looking at those present moments as stepping stones to be able to get to a bigger or more grand or more large goal. And there's nothing inherently wrong about that but it can be a thief of joy. Let's, let's talk about it. And I'll just use myself as an example. I, I won America's Got Talent in 2020. And one of the first things that came to my mind the next day after I won was, what's next? How do I use this? How do I make this moment help propel me and my artistry forward? How can I use this as a bridge to doing the grander things I have in front of me? I haven't even celebrated at this point. I haven't seen most of my family. I haven't seen any of my friends. It was just my wife, my child, and my mom who got the chance to celebrate this victory with me. Also, I think my little brother was there too. Um, but I hadn't even taken the time to really appreciate or even absorb the moment. That took me like two and a half months to finally sit down and shed tears and really absorb the fact that I had just done something that at the time only 14 other people had done. And how crazy is that? That in my moments of celebration, I'm not present enough to actually appreciate them. But my friends, family, and all these other people around me are actively trying to be able to, to lift me up. But I'm just so constantly mine, zoom, zoom, zoom. Like, wait, what's next? What are we doing? Like, how, how, do, how does this lead to that? How does it, it's a never ending maze because guess what? If all you're seeking is elevation, you will get there. 
and you'll find out the air is so thin that you can't breathe once you do. Because you had to sacrifice so many things on the journey to get there. And joy namely being one of them. Raise your hand. I know I won't be able to see it, but just participate with me through the screen. Raise your hand if you spend more time ruminating on the negative things that have happened or on the things that didn't go your way or the bad days than you did actually celebrating the good days. I see a lot of hands up. <laughs> and it's and that's what futurists that's what being a futurist will do to you if it's not also paired with an equal level of balance of being able to of being able to actually like absorb the joys and the pleasures of what's going on in front of you now. And don't get me wrong, there there are people who are presently minded who go far too deep into being presently minded where they don't plan for the future. They have no recollections of what happened in the past and they're not able to learn from the mistakes they made. They're not able to plan forward. So they end up like failing because they, they didn't adequately plan. So it, going too far in any direction will go wrong. But for my futurist, I'm specifically talking to us. If all you are doing is looking ahead you are going to trip on your face because there is likely something in front of you that you haven't looked down at to be either grateful for or cautious of. So just be aware of that, that there is a there is a real need for you to not just look ahead, but to be able to perceive the now and understand that. And then for my people who are stuck in the past, we love to talk about this, especially in relation to like dating. You know, the people who constantly looking back at their ex boo and comparing everybody to the boyfriend that they did wish they didn't let go of or the girlfriend they wish they didn't let go of or whatever, right? Like, it's, I'm not even going to go into that whole bag. But for the people who are consistently, consistently being caught in the snare of being like, yo, like, maybe I'm only ever what I've done. Maybe I'm only ever going to be defined by the things that, the mistakes that I made by the things that I did. Release yourself from that bondage. Because there is there's so much joy in being able to look towards what's happening now, as opposed to being shackled to the things that have that have worn us down. And like I mentioned before, I'm a Christian, so like I, I like to bring Bible into things. So like in, in Matthew's in Matthew chapter six, well, it's specifically verse 34, but we'll start at 32 because I like context. Um, uh, we'll start at 33, but, uh, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be provided for you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. That speaks to the futurist in terms of the trouble that comes to, that's going to come tomorrow. But that also speaks to the person who lives in the past for the person who's constantly being troubled by the, by the worries that happened yesterday. Today will bring enough trouble of its own. It'll also bring enough joy of its own. You should be able to live and exist in what's happening here. And there is no greater representation of this to me than my children. I will find myself looking, like spending time with them on my phone, you know, social media in it up or whatever, looking at pictures of them as kids and being like, man, yo, like, I, where did the time go? not realizing that the time is right now and that it's passing me by while I'm just aimlessly scrolling on this stupid thing. Like I get to see them almost every day because I travel, I, I go on the road and I do my I do my job. I was gonna say wow, but I don't know what that was. <laughs> but being gone so frequently has given me such an admiration of what a gift I have in them and in the finite amount of time that I'll actually have them in this season of life. Because I know the time is coming. My kids will become teenagers and I'm not going to be the cool dad or whatever. They're going to have their homies who they want to kick it with. They're going to go over to their friend's house. They're going to, you know, I don't even know if movie theaters will be a thing in like, you know, 13, 14 years or whatever, but like they're going to have their things. 
but I have a small window where I get to be the superhero, where dad is the coolest dude, way better than mom, right? But like, I want to enjoy that. I want to be present for that. I want to be engaged in that. I don't want to be so caught up in, hey, 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 you know, son, I, I'll get to you soon. Daddy's, you know, trying to get these emails out so that way I can book this next gig. And I don't want to be like, hey, yo, um, hey, baby girl, get, give me a second. I'm, you know, daddy's still, still thinking about what happened yesterday. I want to be able to have a balance of all three things an understanding and reflection of the past to learn and grow from both the mistakes and be able to appreciate the joys. I want to be able to look towards the future, be able to plan healthily and well to be able to handle my future well. And I want to be able to be present enough to not ignore the blessings of the present. It's literally in the name. Our present is a present gift wrap for us to be able to open up every single day. And if we ignore that gift, we will one day look back and say, man, did I, did I not get all that I could have gotten out of it simply because I wasn't willing to finally open my eyes and look down at what's in front of me. And so for myself as a futurist, this is really hard because I'm constantly trying to plan for the future, but hey, it's, it's a part of the job. It's a part of the growth. It's a part of the development. And it's, it's going to be consistently a part of it. And I'm going to make sure that I do my part to, to, to try to be my best version of my current self. And I challenge you to do the same. And, it, and what this looks like is being conscious enough to challenge yourself in those moments when you're finding yourself too consumed in the future for my futurists. Challenge yourself to say, am I worried about uncontrollables right now? And if I am, let's disassociate from it and give myself the space to simply be here. For my people who are too caught up in the past, be like, am I now focusing on things that I've already paid the repercussions of and that I've now grown out of? I have an episode coming up soon that's going to talk about titles that we no longer fit. Both things that we've controlled that we've done that gave us titles and things that we didn't control that gave us titles and how we need to abandon some of those because they're no longer who we actually are. For the person from the past, are you still worried about things that you can't change? But that you are actually already grown out of or making the efforts to move forward from? Because if that's the case, then you need to disassociate from that and be able to say, that's no longer who I am. Allow for me to be able to grow into all that I can be. So yeah, fam, this was a, this was just like, you know, an episode one that I thought would be relevant for a lot of people. Um, you know, there's the reason why this podcast is called Vulnerable is because I'm going to be talking mainly through the lens of things that I've experienced and things that I'm walking through and inviting you all to walk through them with me. You know, some of my active practices in this are going to be saying some uncomfortable truths, um, you know, that I'm not, I don't do a great job at being emotionally present with my kids all the time because I'm physically present, but I'll find myself so constantly distracted by this thing that I don't end up actually giving them my best. So I force myself to put this thing down. I throw it into the other room and I'll just embrace it. And here's a pro tip. When you finally start embracing the moment, you'll experience fatigue, <laughs> especially with my kids. They get me so freaking tired because it's constantly, dad, do you want to, you want to try these mud cookies? And I'm like, no, but sure, I'll, I'll take five. <laughs> right. Um, but it's just like any muscle. The more you work it, the more you exercise it, the better you become at it. So embrace your present. Unwrap that joint every morning. Be grateful that you've been blessed with it because I know that there are so many people who won't be who would love to have another chance at another 24. And if we have our 24 in front of us, we shouldn't spend all of it or even most of it looking ahead at something that we can't control will come 
or looking behind at things that we can't control that once happened. We only have our ability to use our free will about today. So how will you use blah, blah, blah. <laughs> So how will you use yours? Leave that down in the comment section below. And I look forward to seeing some of y'all responses. Um, and uh, stay tuned. Episode two of Vulnerability is coming soon. Um, so yeah, I'll let y'all later.